Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. And welcome to episode 15 of my Ask Matt series where I answer topics just by you, the viewer. Now today we're talking about table saw blades and bandsaw blades. That's a question I get asked a lot. I get asked pretty frequently like what blades do I use in my table saw and then what blade do I have in my bandsaw. So I'll start here at the table saw. I'll talk about the blades I have here and then we'll head over to the bandsaw and we'll talk about those blades. So my table saw blades, I have both a rip and a crosscut blade. I'm one of those weirdos that changes their blade uh, depending on what kind of operations they're doing. I don't have a combination blade. I've never had a combination blade. I've never used a combination blade. Um, but I've always used a dedicated rip and crosscut blade. And the thing I like about this is I know that every single time I use these blades, they're specially customized or they're specially made to do just those operations so I know that the cut is going to be absolutely perfect every single time. Now, that's not saying that a combination blade won't do that for you. I can't really speak to that though. So I have a, I have, well I have two sets of rip and crosscut blades, but these are the ones that I use the most, or these are my primary blades. This one here is my crosscut blade. It's an 80 tooth alternating top bevel. It is the ultimate cutoff blade by Freud. It is a really great blade. It's a full full curve blade, and it is just amazing. It's really really crisp cross cuts with pretty much no tear out unless there's no support on the back of a cut or something. So that blade works extremely well. And this blade here is my rip blade. It is a glue line rip blade, also from Freud. It is I think it's what 30 teeth, 24 teeth. Yeah, it's a 30 tooth blade, and it is a triple chip grind. And that blade works extremely well for rips. It gives really, really perfect edges with no burning and no saw marks on those edges. And it's just a great, great blade. Now before I had these two and I invested the money into these, these are both full kerf, I had a rip blade and a crosscut blade that were both um, thin kerf. So my rip blade I used to use was this 24 inch Diablo blade. I got this from Home Depot. I think it was like 24 bucks. Uh, great little blade. The problem with this is the cuts aren't very clean and it does tend to deflect because it's a thin curved blade. At least for me, I've had that experience where the blades just deflect. The other blade I have here is an A tooth. I think this was a, that was also a Freud. It's another one of those Home Depot blades. And this one works extremely well as, as well as far as cut quality goes, but it does deflect in the cut sometimes, which causes some kind of issues, maybe some burning or something like that. Not as not as nice of a cut as the full kerf blade. But if I'm doing something where I'm doing a lot of cross cutting and I don't want to have such a big kerf there, or I don't care what the um, the cut quality is going to be like, I'll use this blade just because it works a little bit easier on the saw. And the same thing goes for my rip blade. If I'm doing a lot of rips where I don't really care what the edge is going to look like, like if I'm making stickers for drying lumber, I'll use this blade because it, well, it removes less material, which is easier on the saw so it can feed quicker, and I don't really care what the, uh, the finished cut looks like, so that one works out pretty well for that. So as far as sharpening goes, I sharpen my blades every 12 to 18 months or so, just depending on how dull they're getting, depending on how the cut quality looks, and I send them out to a place locally that's, that sharpens them. They do a nice job and it takes them about 10 days or so to get back to me. Now for my dado blade, I have an infinity dado, or infinity dado blade. It comes in this really sweet blue box. <laughs> it comes with a set of shims, and it comes in this kind of sandwich thing inside the box, which I never remove. Um, so it's a piece of plywood with a bolt, and then all the blade pieces are in here. And this blade works extremely well. It has a really, really, really great cut. I'm always surprised with how clean of a cut this thing gives you. Or it gives me, I guess, because maybe you don't have one. <laughs> so this is a great little blade. I used to have a, um, a $50 blade from Home Depot, and that worked for clearing out like a large amount of material, but didn't really leave a clean cut at all as far as the edges go. So if I was ever doing something where I needed a nice crisp edge, like the shoulder on a tenon or something, I would have to cut with the crosscut blade first to establish the shoulder, and then I can clean up with the dado blade. That's an 8-inch blade. 8-inch dado. That just goes right up here. So that's about it for the table saw blades. Let's head over to the bandsaw. So let's talk bandsaw blades. Now the bandsaw blade that I use on my saw all the time is this carbide tip blade. It is a Linux TriMaster and it's just an amazing, amazing blade. The carbide tip blades last a really, really long time and that's what I really like about them. 
and they give some really nice accurate cuts with pretty much no drift at all. Um, I used to use the wood slicer blade from Highland Woodworking. That's a fantastic blade. It works really, really well. The problem I had with these things is I was going through them every man, maybe three months or so because I used to use that bandsaw so much. The cuts with these blades are really, really clean. It's really smooth, very accurately tracking on the, on the wheels. But again, just it was pretty cost prohibitive for me because I was buying one of these things every uh, you know, like two or three months and they're about 40 bucks a piece. This blade was about 150, 160 bucks and I've had the same blade, this one right here. I bought this one in April 2013. I installed it the same month and it's still on here and it's still cutting. So it has more than paid for itself. So this blade is a half inch blade and the wood slicer blades I used to use were three quarter inch. The reason I went half inch on here was for a couple of reasons. The first reason was the three quarter inch blade that they have is a thicker material and the issue with the thicker material on your bandsaw is um, metal fatiguing. So if you have a thick uh, band or bandsaw blade on your tires that are too um, small in diameter, that blade has to bend a lot more to get around that tire and then it'll be stretched out straight again as it comes down. So with that thicker blade, you really, I probably wouldn't run it on this saw because it would probably fatigue it and it would probably break earlier. And I probably wouldn't run this half inch blade on anything smaller than a 14 inch bandsaw. If you do, you just have a higher risk of it breaking on you from this fatiguing over the, over the course of use. The other reason was I have a lot more versatility with it. As you know, if you see many of my videos, I do a lot of resawing and I do a lot of curve cutting. So the half inch blade really offers me the flexibility to do both of the operations with one blade. Now I can't cut really tight radius curves with this blade, but for the work that I do, there's really never a time where I have to save one side of the cut or save both sides of the cut. I always have one side of the cut that is just pure waste. So I can make all my relief cuts on one side and basically chop that side up and work right up to my line so I have one piece that's perfectly following the curve I'm trying to cut. Now the other thing I noticed about this blade is it cuts a lot faster and it makes it seem like my bandsaw has more power than when I was using these standard blades. For whatever reason, even though the curve is a lot wider on this, you're moving a lot more material with this blade, it still cuts faster. The other blade I have that I haven't used in a long time, this is a 3 16 inch uh, standard bandsaw blade. I used this back when I was in the, uh, the bandsaw box phase and I haven't had this on the saw for a very long time. So I just keep this one blade on there. It's running great. It has lasted for, what are we on now? Um, almost two and a half years now and it's still going. So <laughs> I mean, that's, that's value in itself, I guess. So I really can't speak any more highly about a blade like this. It works so well and it's really transformed my bandsaw from something that I kind of have to fight with, something that just works every single time kind of just like a table saw with exactly the same accuracy as you expect from that. Perfectly straight lines, no drift, and really clean cuts every time. So that's about it for this one. If you have any topic suggestions for a future Ask Matt, please feel free to send those to me. And as always, if you're looking for these products, I'll have links to those in the description. Those links are affiliate links, so if you go there and you buy any of these products from any of those retailers, they'll be directly supporting these videos. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching, I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today with the bandsaw blades or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I appreciate those and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.